Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In this tutorial, I will share six tools that you can use in Luminar Neo to create a timeless vintage look for your photos. Vintage style images have always been popular, but it can be challenging to achieve that classic look in a digital age. Fortunately, with Luminar Neo, you don't need expensive equipment or filters. Here is how to use a few simple tools to create your own vintage look. Now, before we're going to start, don't forget that if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the sample files so you can follow me on your own screen. Once you download the sample files, make sure that you import them into the application and we can start. So now we have our sample files ready and we can just pick one. So let's say the lady in front of the train and we can move it into the edit module. To do this, just click on the edit on the top of your screen or use E on your keyboard. Once we're here, we can turn our attention towards the main toolbar where we're going to be searching for six tools that will help us to create a lovely vintage look. Starting with the first one, we're going to turn our attention to creative section and this time to math tool. Let's click on it to open it, make it nice and visible and start by increasing the amount slider. Let's push it quite big so we can see what it does to the image and let's come back to the image itself. As you can see, it creates a really nice subtle vintage feel with crushing the shadows and making them brighter. So the matte tool allows us to add really nice vintage feel with the use of fade, contrast, vividness and so on. So I think it's looking great. If it's too strong for you, you can always come back to the matte tool and play around with the amount slider. To top it off, there are some additional options. You can add more fade if you want to. You can play around with the overall contrast and also adjust the vividness. So you can make it less saturated and a little bit more kind of older version of the photo or you can push the vividness and really create a strong contrast. For me, I think the natural result is with the preset. So somewhere around minus 20. So we leave it there. So the matte tool is a great way of adding a subtle vintage feel to your images. Once we finish with it, we can close it and continue to the next tool. The next tool will be the film grain. Also located in a creative section of our main toolbar, all we need to do here is to click on it and open it. After that, we can move towards our amount slider and simply increasing it to add some nice grain to the image. You will see as you move the slider around, the grain is really strong. However, as you let go, it will sort itself and looks quite nicely. Now I think around 40 is a little bit too much. So let's bring it down to somewhere around 30. 30 looks better, but as always, don't forget to double check the before and after to see how much of the effect you adding. For me, I think maybe 30 is a little bit too much. So let's bring it down to 20 and probably leave it there. If you want more control, you can also click on the size and roughness and play around with more of the look of the grain. However, for me, the preset is look and 20 looks pretty good. If you want, just like with all the tools, don't forget about masking, which you can use to apply the grain only to the specific parts of the image. 
For us, I think it's looking good. So once again, we can close it and apply. The next set of tools will be focusing more on the color part of the image. They will help us to tweak the image around to get more vintage feel into them. So let's go ahead and start with the easiest one. For this, once again, let's go into our main toolbar, then into the creative section and into the mood tool. Click on it to open it and click on the gray drop-down box. Choose LUT is the name and here we're gonna click on add custom LUT file. When you click on it, it will open a new window and here we're gonna navigate towards our sample files. In the sample files, you will see that I also give you five vintage LUTs. So simply select them all. You can do that with your mouse or using command or control A and then click on add. After that, we're gonna return into the application, still in a mood tool, and once again, click on choose LUT. Once you in the Dropbox, go down until you see the custom LUTs, and now you can hover over the different LUTs and see what they do to your image. Looking at it, the samples are not too strong, so let's just jump out, increase the amount to 100%, and come back to our drop-down box. Once again, custom LUTs, and let's see the difference. So the Blockbuster, Classic Sepia, Hollywood Hill, Old Cinema, and Vintage Sepia. Depending what you like, just choose one, and now come back to the sliders and play around with the overall effect. The advantage of using the LUTs is that they do lots of heavy work for you. They add fade, they change the colors, they do the color grading, and all of that at the same time. All you need to do is to adjust the amount of the look, play around with the contrast, maybe make it a little stronger, and adjust the saturation. So LUT in a mood tool is a great way to add a vintage feel to your images with few simple clicks and sliders. Once we finish here, we can close this and move on to the next tool. So we are still focusing on the color part of the image, trying to tweak it around to add more vintage feel to it. For this next tool, we have to mention the black and white look. So let's go into our main toolbar, essential section, and let's use the black and white tool. Once you click on it to open it, all you need to do here is to convert to black and white. Now, just by converting the image to black and white, you will start the journey towards the vintage feel. It doesn't necessarily look vintage. And this is where you can step in with some of the tools we already seen. Let's close the black and white. And now we can, for example, go into the creative section and use the matte tool to add a little bit of fade to it. We can actually add quite a lot. And to top it off, we already know that we can also use the film grain. So we can open the film grain tool and increase it to, once again, somewhere around 20. And now by combining the three tools together, the black and white, the matte and film grain, we get much better result. Let's have a look at the before and after. I think it's looking much better. Now moving on to the next tool, still working with the color part of the image. Since we already have it black and white, now it gives us a great opportunity to use and apply the classic traditional sepia look. To do this, you would turn the image into black and white, just like we did. And after that, we're gonna go back to the creative section and this time use the toning. So the tool number five that will help us to enhance the vintage feel of our image is the toning tool. Let's click on it to open it and let's start by increasing the amount slider. After this, we wanna make sure that we are on the shadows and let's increase the saturation. As you will see, your image will start to turn red and all we have to do is to go into the hue and use the slider here to push it around to get the right sepia look. For me, I think somewhere around 41 is looking good, but that's not it, we need to continue. After this, we're gonna click on highlights and again, increase the saturation here. The same thing again, we need to go onto the hue and push it around to get the sepia look here. So again, I think somewhere around 41 is fine. Now let's have a look at the before and after. 
And there you have it. You can get this really nice sepia look. And to top it off, the toning tool gives you the opportunity to really pick exactly the color of the sepia you're looking for. All you need to do is to adjust the hue slider. You can make it a little bit more green or more on orange side. Similarly, after that, you just need to come back to the shadows and also adjust it around. So as you can see, when it comes to adjusting the color of your image to add more vintage feel to it, you can use the black and white tool by itself. You can use the black and white tool in a combination with other tools like matte tool and film grain, and you can upgrade it into the sepia look with the use of toning tool. Just before we go into continue, I want to quickly mention that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Power Bundle. For a little fee, you can get over 986 new elements to power up your favorite tools in Luminar Neo. Get it today and receive extra high definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, sky objects, LUTs, and presets to easily transform your images with just a few clicks. To get the best possible price, follow the link in the description of this video, or to find out more about it, visit our website, cleverphotographer.com. Now to finish the tutorial, I will show you a tool that will allow us to really transform the image and add extra amount of vintage feel to it. And for this, we're gonna use the power of overlays. To control the overlays, we need to go into the Layers panel. Here, click on a plus sign and look at the library here. For this tutorial, we're going to be using the overlays that come with the application and you should have them installed already. You can use any of the overlays here. However, I think for the vintage feel, the Light Leaks collection works the best. Simply select one of the overlays available and click on it. After that, it will appear on our Layers panel. We have the original image and we have the new layer here. As you can see, with one click, we get this really nice look, we get this extra noise and some of the like a paper cracks on it. If you want to adjust the overall look, you can go into the layer properties, play around with the opacity or simply use the buttons here to flip the overlay around to get the result you are looking for. Don't forget that you can also use masking if you want to apply the overlay only to the specific part of the image. So for example, if I don't want that much of a noise on her face, I can click on masking, then go into the brush. And this time we're going to be removing part of the overlay. So we're going to click on erase and then adjust the size of our brush, play around with the strength. So let's say we go to 60 and then simply brush over her face to remove some of the noise from it. Let's have a look. I think somewhere around here is looking good. After that, we can come back to the properties and we are done. If you want to try another overlay, you just need to come back to the layers panel, click on a plus sign, and let's say that we're going to use one of the light leaks after that. So click on it to apply it. Again, place it on the image and adjust any of the settings you want in the layer properties. And just before we going to finish, I have a bonus tip for another tool that can help us to enhance the vintage feel. You already know the tool as it is the vignette tool. For this, we need to go into the main toolbar, essential section and vignette tool. Here we play around with the amount slider. Usually I like to adjust it a little bit. However, for the vintage feel, we actually want to add a fair bit of it, maybe somewhere around minus 70. If you want, you can also click on choose subject and adjust the center of the vignette. So let's say that we can place it somewhere here. To top it off, if you really want to have more control over the vignette, you can use the advanced setting where you can play around with the roundness of the vignette, with the feather, and also add a little bit of inner light in the center of the image. So now let's have a look at the before and after, and you can see how it helps to the overall result. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminar give. 
While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.